Before we look at this painting, it would be really worth reading uh, in Luke 24 the story of the walk to Emmaus and getting to understand and know the Bible story. The painting we're going to look at is called The Supper at Emmaus. It's by an artist called Kerry Richards. He was a Welsh painter, born 1903, died in 1971 and taught in a Welsh art college. And this painting can be found hanging above the altar in the chapel of St Edmund's Hall in Oxford. I gather St Edmund's is one of the oldest education sites in Oxford, but only became a college in 1957. And the students held a competition for an altarpiece. And the theme that was given by the chaplain was the Supper at Emmaus, based on that passage, Luke 24, 13 to 35. There was 30, 15 pounds given if they liked the sketch. There was 300 pound fee for a commission. And all the money went to the artists, but the major artists of the day, Stanley Spencer, John Piper and the like, didn't think it was enough money. There are a few versions of this painting, but this is the one that's above the altar. It depicts particularly the verse, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Why I love art is that the artist has read the passage, he's thought about it, and he's written a sermon in paint for us. And each feature of the painting draws us into the Bible story and illuminates it. So let's start with the two disciples. In the story, there's two companions just coming back from the Passover weekend in Jerusalem. And it's obvious uh, they've been there because they know the story of what happened over the weekend and how Jesus, the prophet, had been crucified. One of them, and I assume this is the disciple on the right, is called Cleophas. He's named in the story, so perhaps the draw his face. The one with his back to us, though, is unnamed. I've always thought that it was two male disciples, but someone pointed out to me recently that as they share a house together and they invite Jesus to have a meal with them, could they have been husband and wife? Perhaps we'll never know. We don't actually know what they look like, of course, but we do know something about their psychological state, their mood. They're described as downcast. Secondly, move on to the feet. The artist has painted something which you can't not help seeing when you've looked at it, and that's they all have these most enormous feet. And I think the point is that this is a story about a journey, a walk home to Emmaus, which we're told is about seven miles away from Jerusalem. If you draw a circle around Jerusalem, there isn't actually a place called Emmaus. We don't actually know where it is. On the journey, Jesus, or a, a stranger, draws alongside them. For me, what's the most important is that there's an interior journey going on in the story and in the painting. A journey from doubt to hope. A journey from sadness to joy. The story they tell the stranger is lashed with sorrow, dashed hopes and confusion. And at the end of the journey, they jog back, they run on their big feet back to Jerusalem to the other disciples. Move on to the next feature, which I think is the most clever part of the painting, or one of the most clever parts. It's the whole painting. It's done in only blues, yellows and greens, but the yellow door and the yellow table form a pattern of a cross. The stranger draws by them and he says to the two disciples, you know your trouble, you're slow of heart, slow to believe. And for the seven mile journey, he begins a Bible study and he takes passages from the Old Testament that describe how the Messiah, Zechariah 11 verse 12 to 30, will be sold for pieces of silver. Isaiah 50 verse 6, he'd be whipped. Isaiah 53 verse 5, he'd be wounded for our sins. Isaiah 53 verse 7, he'd be silent when convicted. 
Psalm 22, verse 7 to 8, he'd be mocked. Psalm 22, verse 16, his hands and feet would be pierced. Psalm 22, verse 18, his clothes would be parted and lots cast for them. Psalm 22, verse 1, he'd cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 34, verse 20, not a bone in his body would be broken. Zechariah 12, verse 12, his side would be pierced. Psalm 16, verse 10, he'd rise from the dead. And Isaiah 53, verse 11, after suffering, he would live again forever. The conversation they had on the road was about the cross. Which brings us to this feature, the blessing of the bread. The two, Cleopas and his, uh, the person with him, invites Jesus to share a meal with him. And at the meal, they ask him to break the bread. And it's in the breaking of the bread that they recognise Jesus. Their eyes are opened. Perhaps they saw the gaping wounds. But he prays over the meal and no one prayed like Jesus. He breaks the bread. I reckon his sleeves went back and they saw the marks of the nails. The bread is in their hands, their eyes are opened. Jesus is risen from the dead. Which brings us to this feature. This is where I think the painting is the most profound. Jesus has blessed the bread and the story says it disappears from their eyes. And I love the way the body in the yellow is simply disappearing as they realise they've been in the presence of the written Jesus and they are two of the 500 witnesses who saw him. I want to conclude. This story for me asks a vital question. How do we know Jesus? How do we discern him? How can we tell that he is walking with us? I've only heard of a few people who've seen Jesus face to face. Most people, it's about joining dots together to reveal the bigger picture. And you can see it in the story the disciples are drawing on their past and recent experience. The drawing on their knowledge of scripture. They draw on the interpretation of scripture offered by the stranger. They draw on their culture to offer hospitality. And the final piece eludes them until Jesus takes and breaks bread. Then the picture is complete. They see the risen Christ. They complete the picture made up of all the pieces. There's a structure to this story. The disciples came together, in this case two of them. Jesus joined them. The scriptures were read and explained. They broke bread, at which point Jesus was recognised. And I don't think it's any mistake that today Christian worship follows a structure that we've inherited and practised since those resurrection appearances. We gather together, we hear the scriptures, we break bread together, and at some point in all of that, we find Jesus has been with us, has met with us, and shares with us. Amen.